Now these absolutely fascinate me, John, because of course we're moving a bit into my sort of generation. And, yep. and these are the sort of rods I aspired to when I was teenager, I guess, 20s. Mm. What sort of age would this be? 90s? 70s. Yeah, 70s. 70s. Yeah, Richard Walker, of course, consulting for Hardy, as you have done. So you'll know, yeah. the, you'll know yeah. the route he's yeah. taken. Uh, and, um, Which, of course, was really, I suppose, why Hardy for those years was my dream job because I idolised Hardy, yep. Taylor, Buller, yep. all of whom were sort of consultants with Hardy. Yes. These were the rods that they were responsible for. And why wouldn't you? You know, if you were a tackle company and you wanted the you wanted the best rod to be made, you would go to the best anglers with the best experience and having caught some of the mm. biggest fish. Mm. The, and they know, were great titans, weren't they? They oh, yeah. really were. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. absolutely. I mean it was my Oh, I suppose it was my dream to get to know Fred Buller in his later days. And what an angling mind. I mean, it's interesting, isn't it? Because they made they made top end rods. These are fly rods, but mm. spinning rods and coarse rods. Mm. I mean Hardy was well known was for spinning every discipline. Was wasn't knocking it? about somewhere. In in the <laughs> this is funny. In in the part of this collection we have this. Uh, Which okay. immediately, when you and I look at it, I think yeah. there's something wrong there. There's not, that's not right. No, well, it? apart from the reel being on backwards, <laughs> it's, a, it's a fly reel on a Norsk spinning rod. But again, it's a Hardy model, it's a 10 foot. Um, I don't think there's many of these around actually, but that's a pokey beast. But somebody's decided to go fly casting. I did manage to have a cast of it earlier and I got about 20 feet. <laughs> but I'd have a lie down, it was that bad. It was that bad. But you know, most of the time you think, these are the rods that we remember for us as kids. This is great. This is one of them. Now, it'd be foolish if we said everything we bought is mint, because I don't know if the camera can see, but if you look at that, it basically goes towards the tree, turns hard right, and then goes downstream. <laughs> it's, it's a shocking thing. I don't know. I think it's been stood in a corner, because I tried to cast it, but I'm right-handed, and it hit me in the left ear. So it's not a good thing. So sadly, all the value is taken out of that. But look at this minty, so that's about the 1940s. I was just having a dig through and I spotted this. Alistair Agator, cane rod builder. Famous? Yeah, you'd look at it and you'd say, that's unusual, but tell me what's unusual about it. Uh, oh, four sides? Four sides. He pine well. He didn't pioneer. He re pioneered. Is that, is that a word or even a phrase? He took. He re looked at the quadrant rods. So thinking, that's what they call. Yeah, quadrant rods. So a quad for four. Because you can buy you can buy rods in four strip uh, bamboo. You can buy them in five strip, which are quite rare. Six, which is a common hexagon, and eight non orgonals. So there is a variety of attempts to make the perfect rod. And Alistair decided to launch the Quadrant series based on having four larger flat sides to give the rod power and flexibility. But it never quite caught on because we, in my mind, split cane is six sided. And it takes an awful lot to move away from that to saying this rod is different and it's better. This actually was the, one of his prototype rods built in 1991. Uh, I don't think it's been used much, if at all. It's beautiful to cast, got a fast tip. So what would be the problem with, with the four sides? I mean, yeah. wh wh I mean, wh how do you come to settle on six sides as being the standard? Is it just through know. trial and error? Uh, I suppose so. If you go way back to the early rod makers, pre-1900, the six-sided principle came out. Prior to that, of course, were rods like this, which we looked at earlier, sorry. Mm. Uh, one of these, which are the bamboo ones, which are whole bamboo. This, again, this is one of the refurbished ones. That's an absolute work of art. But the whole bamboo tends to be very stiff and not flexible. You can go down to a much reduced diameter. Look at the difference in, in thickness if you like the butt sections. Albeit oh, they're not quite the same. Yeah. It, it's incredibly I mean, thin it's fascinating. and powerful. I find this I find this really fascinating. Just just this sort of what is it? Century by century progression? Yeah. Yeah, you're talking a hundred years apart, maybe even more actually. Yeah. I mean a rod's still a rod. But even going back 100, 150 years, manufacturers and builders were still struggling with how do we get the tip soft? How do we get the action right? So do we put six pieces? Do we put four? Do we do whole cane? Do we put green out? And that's a fascinating thing about it for the hobbyist, is all of this 
just to go fishing. <laughs> to catch, there is to so sneak many, up in the fish. There, there are so many live stories in here. Oh yeah, it's, it's amazing. I mean, we've got roach poles from the Thames, which we'll have a look at later. Uh, 22 feet long are these. The butt section is that thick. Can you imagine hanging onto one of these, trying to catch a bream in the moving tents? Mm. You, you, men were men then, and you know, women to be feared. So um, we'll have a look at just a little bit later on when I dig through some of the other bits and pieces in the boot. But oh, really. that's, that was worth a mention with the four-sidedness yeah. of it. And uh, what a great thing. So did have. this ever go into production? Uh, yeah, yep. There are production rods around. Uh, mm. There aren't many, but you know, if you want something a little bit unusual from a rod builder, it may cost. Mm. 200, 250 pounds or something, it's not a thousand pounds. Is a prototype, d does that tend to be more expensive or more it valuable? Can be. Sort of it can be, it can be. It's on the rod. It, truly, you'd need a bunch of provenance to make it huge money. Right. But I think in real terms, it, it doesn't really matter. It is a quadrant rod. It is a rare thing. It is fishable, of course. It's, it's, you can go out, we can fish this right now in the river. You know, And it'd be a beautiful rod to fish. But mm. for the rod collector who wants something different, mm. In vintage terms, it's not a lot of money, I mean, but it's not even vintage. I would love to try this. Yeah, or we'll maybe have a go on it one yeah. day. Fantastic. We'll bring that down yeah. and put a line on I think, it. I think we're building up quite a few fishing experiences here. Yes, I'm going to have to stay here for the year. Let's <laughs> <laughs> have a look, see what else we yeah. can find. Dig in.